Welcome to Networking and Health Information Exchange, National and International Standards Developing Organizations. This is Lecture B. The component, Networking and Health Information Exchange, addresses what is required to accomplish networking across and among disparate organizations that have heterogeneous systems. As one might imagine, this topic covers a lot of territory fraught with new topics and a lot of acronyms. My apologies, but it is what it is. I suggest you keep your glossary beside you as you study this material. Unit 3 covers national and international standards developing organizations and consists of three lectures. Over these three lectures, we will continue to discuss the value of health data standards and why there should be global standards. We also introduce you to the national and international organizations developing standards, as well as other significant organizations that influence the creation or use of health data standards. In Lecture B, we will provide some detail about the organizations that develop standards for health information technology, HIT, for the global community. We will discuss specific organizations and the kind of standards each organization develops. Slide 2. The objectives for this unit, National and International Standards Developing Organizations, are to explain why standards related to networking and health information exchange are important, particularly in the current environment. Standards development, which includes how standards are developed, who develops them, how standards are accredited, and how standards are selected. Slide 3. We continue to define the objectives of Unit 3. Understand different kinds of standards being developed and for what purpose. Learn about standards developing organizations and the standards they create. Demonstrate how to find, obtain, and use standards that are needed to facilitate networking and health information exchange. It is likely that you will hear the word standard every day in some setting. In some cases, the speaker will be referring to standards that are produced by a formal process. In other cases, the speaker will be referring to a general concept. Much of the content of this unit will be referring to formal standards. Some standards will deal only with the words we use and the characteristics of those words. Others will deal with actually moving the data from one unit to another. What is required so that the received data is understood by the receiver? Other standards will refer to applications or system components that may be used without creating special interfaces to permit the application to work with other systems. A number of organizations produce standards. Some are U.S.-based, some international, and some both. The organizations mostly create standards for specific purposes. In some cases, standards from different organizations compete for the same functionality. Unit 3 will define some classes or categories of standards that you may encounter in your work. We will discuss how to find, obtain, and use standards from a variety of organizations that are needed to facilitate networking and the sharing of health data with others. A word of warning. This unit includes many, many acronyms that are part of the everyday language of the people who create and use standards. We will always first give you the words, then the acronym. Once defined, we will use the acronym in future slides. Slide 4. The International Standards Organization's Technical Committee, ISO TC215, was established in 1998 under strong initiative and leadership from the U.S. and the United Kingdom. Most countries require use of an ISO standard if one exists. Standards are available from ISO, but at a cost. Membership is by nations, represented by delegates representing the countries. Currently, TC215 has 32 participating countries and 21 observing countries. These numbers are in constant fluctuation and represents most regions of the world. ISO TC215 has published almost 100 standards under their direct responsibilities. Balloting is by country. Products are 
technical reports which describe and discuss a topic. TRs are for information only. Technical specifications. Similar to a standard but does not require compliance, a TS is a strong suggestion. International standards. Known as a normative document must be followed explicitly to be compliant. Any departure from the standard is non-compliant. ISO has many technical committees and several are of interest to healthcare. Other TCs are represented in TC215 through liaison, 30 in number. Other organizations can also establish liaison relationships with ISO, 10. Liaison members of TC215 include CDISC, COCIR, DICOM, GS1, HON, ICN, IHE, IHTSDO, IMIA, WHO. Slide 5. TC215 has eight active work groups. One other group, WG5 on data cards completed its work and was inactivated. WG1 deals with data structure and is the WG that defines standards for the EHR and related material. WG2 deals with data interchange and includes messaging standards, data types, data models, and such. WG3 deals with terminology. WG4 deals with security. WG6 deals with pharmacy, regulatory, and adverse event reporting standards. WG7 deals with connectivity to medical devices. This group works closely with IEEE and SEN on standards that connect medical devices to systems. WG8 is similar to WG1. Sometimes the distinction is difficult to define. This WG deals more with what an EHR is rather than its structure and architecture. WG9 is a different type of WG in that its purpose is harmonization of standards activities among multiple SDOs. It is closely affiliated with the Joint Initiative Council, a collaborative organization of many international SDOs. Slide 6. The European Committee on Standardization, SEN, has a bilateral agreement with ISO, called the Vienna Agreement, whereby SEN standards can become ISO standards and ISO standards can become SEN standards. HL7 International has a pilot agreement through which HL7 standards can be submitted to TC215 to become ISO standards. IEEE has a partnership agreement through which IEEE standards can become ISO standards. Slide 7. The Joint Initiative Council was formed in 2007 by ISO, SEN, and HL7 International. SDOs subsequently joining JIC include CDISC, IHTSDO, and GS1. The purpose of the JIC is to create one standard for one purpose. One of the first successes of the JIC was the creation of a single standard for data types. Other activities include a standard for reporting adverse events, individual case safety report, a glossary, the Biomedical Research Integrated Domain Group, BRIDG, EHR Functional Model, and others. A standard moves to JIC when multiple SDOs have an interest in creating the same standard and the SDOs agree to work together. Slide 8. Although SEN has been in existence for a long time, the health focus was created in the early 1990s. The acronym SEN comes from the French name of the organization, Comité Européen de Normalisation. The 27 member countries of the European Union are members of SEN. SEN has published over 160 technical reports, technical specifications, pre-standards, and European standards since the early 1990s. 18 of these standards are jointly published as ISO standards. Much of the standards work in SEN is done by paid consultants. Balloting is by country. Slide 9. 
SEND functions with four work groups. WG1 is similar to ISO WG1, WG6, and WG8. WG2 is similar to ISO WG3. WG3 is similar to ISO WG4. WG4 is similar to ISO WG2 and ISO WG8. Slide 10. EN means European National Standard. The reference model defined in Part 1 is different than the HL7 reference information model and has created some harmonization problems. Reference information models are important because they are the basis from which the data parts of standards are created and are key to interoperability. Part 1 also defines the architecture for the EHR. The EHR is defined as a hierarchical structure of components or folders similar to a paper chart in which a single encounter would be a folder. The collection of folders would create the EHR. Archetypes are data structures such as the components that are part of a blood pressure measurement. The UK uses these archetypes as a key part of data definition and data interchange. Europe is now moving toward the use of archetypes. Again, there is competition between HL7's detailed clinical models and templates. However, efforts are being made to harmonize these activities. Part 5 competes with HL7 messaging standards and is in little use at this time. The other parts of 13606 are not in significant use at this time. Slide 11. The name Health Level 7 comes from two terms. Health, which represents the domain of focus and includes clinical and administrative data. Level 7 refers to the highest level of the ISO Communications Model for Open Systems Interconnection, OSI, the application level. HL7 is in use in most hospitals in the U.S. and an increasing number of clinics and doctor's offices. HL7 is governed by a board of 15 members including four officers, chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. The organization is led also by a chief executive officer, Dr. Charles Jaffe, and an executive director, Mark McDougall. An external advisory council provides advice to the organization. HL7 International is ANSI accredited and is an ISO partner. Many HL7 standards are required for use by ONC as part of the meaningful use requirement. Slide 12. In the technical organizational structure of HL7, there are four steering divisions. These divisions are Domain Experts, Foundation and Technology, Structure and Semantic Design, Technical and Support Services. Each has a number of work groups that make up the division. The next four slides will detail the content of these steering divisions. They are grouped by similarity in the kind of work done by the group. The steering divisions provide the composition and leadership in the Technical Steering Committee, TSC, which provides the technical leadership of HL7. The TSC is led by the TSC Chair, Member Volunteer, and the HL7 Chief Technical Officer, who is a member of the HL7 staff, John Quinn. Slide 13. The Domain Expert Steering Group includes all of the domain-specific activities. The Domain Expert Groups are Anatomic Pathology, Anesthesiology, Attachments, Child Health, Clinical Interoperability Council, Community-Based Health Services, Emergency Care, Government Projects, Healthcare Devices, Imaging Integration, Laboratory, Patient Care, Patient Safety, Public Health Emergency Response, PHER, Pharmacy, Regulated Clinical Research Information Management, RCRIM. This group is the most clinical group in HL7 and brings the clinical community into the standards making process. Slide 14. The Foundation and Technology Division includes Conformance and Implementation, Infrastructure and Messaging, 
Implementable Technology Specifications ITS, Java, Modeling and Methodology, Security, Service-Oriented Architecture SOA, Templates and Vocabulary. The Foundation and Technology Division members build the basic pieces that others like domain experts and structure and semantic design workgroups use to actually construct the messages. Slide 15. The Structure and Semantic Design Group includes as members Arden Syntax, Clinical Context Object Workgroup, CCAO, Clinical Decision Support, Clinical Statement, Electronic Health Record, EHR, Financial Management, Genomics, Orders and Observations, Patient Administration, Personnel Management, Scheduling and Logistics, and Structured Documents. This group addresses structural standards. They include administrative and surface-related standards. Orders and observation deals with laboratory ordering and results reporting. For example, clinical decision support standards are required for meaningful use. Details of the products from these workgroups will be discussed in following slides. Slide 16. Technical and support services includes education, electronic services, implementation, and marketing committee. Technical and Support Services, for instance, has work groups who focus on tools and products that make HL7 successful at doing its work. For instance, publishing makes sure there are tools and processes for publishing the work. The work groups in this division do not develop HL7 products. They provide the tools so that others can do so. Slide 17. Version 2.x Messaging standards are the first standards HL7 produced. It is, in fact, its purpose for coming into existence. Over 90% of the hospitals in the U.S. use version 2.x standards. Version 2.7 is the latest current published version, and version 2.8 is in ballot. These messaging standards will be discussed in detail in another unit. Connectivity and sharing data using messaging standards. The master file structure infrastructure standards permit the exchange of files, such as data dictionaries, vocabularies, and other resources among participants. Role-based access control is very important for privacy and security. These standards define who can have access to data based on what role they play in that patient's care. Slide 18. As noted, the Reference Information Model, RIM, is the base for HL7 model-based standards, including HL7 version 3, Messaging and the Clinical Document Architecture, CDA, standard. The RIM is the model to which components of all HL7 data-related standards are linked. The prime components are Entity, Role of the Entity, Act, and Participation of the Entity with the Act. Data types are essential to interoperability. They can be as simple as a date. Is it DDMMYY or MMDDYY? Is it a 12-hour clock with AM or PM or is it a 24-hour clock? What is the time zone and how is it expressed? The basic data types are ones that you might use in a computer program. Binary, numeric, integer, floating point, character, text, string, date, time, etc. The Common Message Element Type, or CMET, defines commonly used constructs such as a telephone number, a person, name, or an address. CMETs are reusable data structures and have great value in the international setting. The XML Implementation Technology Specification, ITS, for structures, define the constructs for XML syntax in HL7 messages. Slide 19. These standards move into the application area. The EHR functional model defines the functionality required for an EHR system. Different applications are addressed by creating profiles or implementation guides for various domains and care settings. This standard is the basis for certification of EHRs in the U.S. and is now being used in other countries as well. This topic will be discussed in detail in later units. 
The behavioral health functional model and the child health functional model are examples of profiling the basic standard for a specific domain. Profiling is expanding into a number of sites, settings, and uses. Scheduling permits the exchange of appointment and diagnostic test scheduling among units. Notifiable conditions reporting defines required reporting, for example, for communicable diseases, infectious diseases, sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, and such. Personnel management includes standards that support reporting and the exchange of data relating to personnel management. The genomic standard is rapidly being used for sharing family histories, constructing family trees. Slide 20. The Clinical Document Architecture, CDA, is a standard for creating documents. Its use is becoming worldwide and permits a measure of conformance and integrity in the exchange of data. The CDA will be discussed in detail in a later unit. The Continuity of Care Document, CCD, is a specialization of the CDA, in a sense an implementation guide for the exchange of summary patient data. HL7 has now produced a number of purpose-specific implementation guides. The decision support products will also be addressed in detail in later units. Clinical decision support systems, CDSS, are important not only for meaningful use, but for applying knowledge to data to provide information. The Arden syntax and the virtual medical record permit an SOA-based approach to decision support through a mappable interface to any EHR. Jello is the language for creating clinical guidelines. InfoButton is a standard for attaching knowledge and the presentation of knowledge for any data element. This standard has been quickly used by vendors to add value to their product. Slide 21. These regulated product standards have been influenced by regulatory bodies such as the FDA and European Medicines Agency, EMEA. Structured Product Labeling, SPL, is a standard for defining what you get on the small print piece of paper that is included with your drug package. It addresses such things as potential side effects, ingredients, dosing instructions, precautions, etc. SPL provides this data in a structured way to be used in a computable manner. The annotated ECG includes the tracing, measurements, and comments in a structured way. The Individual Case Safety Report, ICSR, serves to report drug-caused adverse events. This standard is being used internationally by both FDA and ICH-EMEA. The other standards relate to drug trials and for the submission of regulated products detail to the FDA. The Common Product Model, CPM, addresses expanding types of products including devices and substances. Slide 22. The Clinical Context Object Workgroup, CCOW, has created a set of standards that takes a patient ID and passes it to related systems, retrieves that patient record, and links it to the current system. In essence, this standard permits single sign-on. The user is authenticated across the different systems. If a site is supported by multiple different systems, CCOW will provide access to the same patient's data across the different applications without logging onto that system and independently bringing up that patient's record. CCOW is a tremendous time saver. The other parts of CCOW provide additional functionality across multiple systems or applications. Slide 23. An Implementation Guide, IG, defines specifically what is required in the use of a standard for a specific purpose. The IG removes optionality. For example, it states what data elements are required and when. It defines specifically what vocabularies are to be used. It defines when data is exchanged. With a well-written IG, Interoperability can be achieved across the group using the IG. Here is a list of implementation guides being developed by HL7. HL7 Claims Attachments Secure HL7 Transactions Using Internet Mail 
HL7 Security Service Framework, CDA R2, Common Audit Message, Standard Guide for Implementing HL7 EDI Communication Security, HL7 Version 2.X Messaging Profiling Specification, and Continuity of Care Document, CCD. That list continues to grow. The rules for claims attachments are defined by CMS. It specifies what clinical or administrative data are to be sent supporting the claim. An IG defines the rules for providing security using the Internet. Other IGs define security requirements for a variety of settings. CCD is an implementation guide for exchanging patient summary data. Slide 24. Several HL7 standards will be required by HHS as a part of the meaningful use. Named standards include HL7 version 2.5.1 Implementation Guide, Electronic Laboratory Results Reporting to Public Health, Clinical Document Architecture, CDA, Continuity of Care Document, CCD, Messaging Standard version 2.5.1, and Messaging Standard version 2.3.1. You are likely to encounter these standards in your job as an IT person. We will discuss all of these standards in detail in other parts of this component. Slide 25. The Clinical Data Interchange Standards Consortium, CDISC, is an organization started mainly by pharmaceutical companies. It is a research-based organization created to support clinical trials. It is now international and holds meetings around the world. Most of the standards define data elements used in research and clinical trials. Study Data Tabulation Model, SDTM, defines data elements used in clinical trials. The CDISC Analysis Data Model, ADAM, defines statistical analyses performed on clinical trials data. Other standards include an Operational Data Model, ODM, Clinical Data Acquisition Standards Harmonization, CDASH, a lab data model, and terminology for clinical trials. Slide 26. Key GS1 standards include barcodes, ECOM, Electronic Business Messaging Standards for Automatic Transmission of Data, GDSN, Global Data Synchronization, allow business partners to have consistent item data in their system at the same time, and EPC Global, use RFID technology to track items in real time. If you work in a setting that uses barcodes, you are likely to use a GS1 standard. GS1 creates a unit identifier that can exist throughout the supply chain. Ideally, this standard will be used from product creation to product use. The GS1 ID system enhances traceability, the ability to trace a product throughout its life cycle. RFID is for radio frequency identifiers. It is a badge that contains an RF transmitter that transmits the identity indicated on the card. It is used to track people, including physicians and patients, equipment and supplies. Slide 27. This concludes Lecture B of National and International Standards Developing Organizations. In this unit, you learn that there are many SDOs, both national and international, that create standards necessary for interoperability. The challenge exists that there are both overlapping and competing standards and there are gaps in the required standards. Each SDO has its own focus, but in time, most SDOs have creeping scope. It is interesting that we have so many SDOs because producing standards is an expensive task. Most SDOs have budgets in the million dollar range and many companies spend hundreds of thousands of dollars annually to participate in making standards. Consequently, there are limited resources for creating standards, so why not work together? The making of standards has created other businesses, including consultants who teach you how to use standards and educators who teach you about standards. You won't remember the details of every one of the SDOs we discussed in this unit, 
but you will have some familiarity with the names and some idea of what kinds of standards are produced.